today I have my guest, Amber Kelly. She is my sister-in-law and I'm so proud of her. She's visiting us. She's in town from Fort Lauderdale. And so I asked her if she would come on the show and tell me about the massive transitions that she has had over the last 10 years specifically. She just graduated from college. She got a full ride to FAU. So not only is she beautiful, but she is smart and talented and athletic. Um, so I just wanted to thank you, Amber, for coming on the show. Thank you again so much for having me. <laughs> so Amber is an Area 32 Director, Division C for Toastmaster International. It's a public speaking organization, and they are worldwide or nationwide? Worldwide. Worldwide. So tell me about Toastmasters and tell me about how that has helped you through the years, how long you've been involved with the club, and um, tell us about Toastmasters for those of us who don't know anything about it, like me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Toastmasters International is a worldwide public speaking organization, and besides public speaking, it actually helps you with leadership skills, communication skills, and honestly, the list really goes on because there's so many different skills that you can just achieve in it, and I've only been in the club for a little over two years actually so I haven't even been in it that long wow. and I think the transition for me and just moving up in the ladder for Toastmasters mm -hmm. has been something that I never would have imagined in my life. Like you mentioned I am the Area 32 Director for Division C, District 47 and Region 8. It, like I said and your former president of Tell us what you that, that background, your former president of the FAU division of that? Yeah, so of course my home club is Florida Atlantic University's uh, Toastmasters Club. For that, first off, I was the vice president of public relations and I kind of like marketed our club to our university and a lot of the people in my club, a lot of members, a lot of officers said that I really was one of the best ones for VP of PR. And for me, a lot of people then tried to encourage me to run for president of our club. Wow. And I, I was like, I don't know. It's like, I'm gonna, it's going to be my senior year and it's gonna be a lot. I really don't know if I can handle it, but there's so many officers, so many members that really wanted me to go out and do it. And, I was like, you know what, I, I guess I can. I don't know how much of a leader I actually am to others, but I just pushed myself and I honestly went for it. I ran and I ended up winning. And there's other members that went to go run for president that were in the club longer than I was. And it really does pay off. If you show and you push yourself to do something, you are rewarded with that. And I was rewarded with being present at my club. I just actually ended it like June 30th was my last day as president. It was a full year term. I was, it was really great. I ended up trying to lead our other officers in our club and just overseeing the whole process, making sure everyone pays for dues, mm -hmm. try to retain more members of it. And that really did pay off because I helped out more with my club, helped out more with our division, more with our district, helped out with contests. And honestly, like with that whole process, I, from where I was last year and from where I am now is like a totally different person. So yeah, I want to, I want to actually really elaborate on that. So Amber was a, so Amber's 22 years old. She was a very, very shy child. I have been with her brother for 14 years, and so I've gotten to see this entire transition from Amber being a very, very shy little girl to the beautiful, outwardly spoken, well-educated, so smart, like young woman that's now gonna go out and change her corner of the world. What do you, how do, who do you credit for that? Do you credit Toastmasters? Do you think it was just a natural evolution? Uh, was it something that you consciously said, okay, this is like who I want to be in the world, so I'm gonna consciously bring this about? Like, how did that transition from you being like a painfully shy 
little girl, how did that evolution happen to now you're comfortable speaking in front of hundreds, <laughs> hundreds of people and you're like, yeah, I got this. It's fine. <laughs> Honestly, the it's actually funny because what I always credit is that the number one fear in the world is not death. It yeah. is public I speaking. I knew that. <laughs> and honestly public speaking is not something that i would ever wanted to do in my life i think i'd rather just die than public speak in front yeah. of anyone even if it's just like a group of five people yeah. that i don't know and it's a group of strangers i would never approach them but i think it's just pushing myself i don't think like it's just any one person that helped me along the way it's just me consciously thinking that I am good, that I can be the best me that I can be, and just going out there and just trying new things. And it's it, it's, it gets a little hard at times because I don't, sometimes I might just put myself down saying, no, I really can't do this, but I just got to remember there's a group of friends that I earned along the way that I love especially in Toastmasters and just from back when I was in elementary school probably around like seven eight years old I don't think of my I never thought of myself as like a popular individual I was like kind of like I wouldn't say like a weird child or anything like that just quiet quiet yeah, yeah. and sweet but very quiet <laughs> like I was very I was very quiet I wanted to keep to myself I did have some friends but it's you know people um, individuals back in my elementary school picked on me because I was a very quiet mm -hmm. individual and you were also considered um, the school that you went to was mostly ethnic, am I right about that? Yeah. So, so you were considered a minority. Yeah, I was a minority in my school and that did it that really did kind of credit of how I was picked on to because I was this minority in my school and I really feel out for like any minorities out there because it's like I know what it feels like to be picked on just because of your skin color mm -hmm. and honestly that credit to how quiet I was and I wasn't really uh, skinny back then too and every time I see her <laughs> she is like in better and better shape I'm like girl you're looking good girl not that you have to be thin to be beautiful but you really have just transformed everything throughout the years like yeah. you've had a whole like full on full body full personality sort of um almost like a swan you know like the beautiful swan that emerges after years of sort of being um inward yeah so like i said it's just when i go and look at it back then and look at it how i was now i just look at different moments in my life that really has sparked that change and i always credit it not only to myself but to the people that i be friends i think they really try to encourage me along the way mm -hmm. and i think that's always really important just mm -hmm. to have that group of friends mm -hmm. that you can trust that you that they can motivate you if not then i don't think they should really be your friend I, I agree 100 <laughs> percent but because it's dead weight mm -hmm. you are who you hang around with most so you have to be very careful who you hang around with yeah because your energy like what they feel that energy comes back on you if Absolutely. they're feeling down you're gonna feel down but if they're very positive very outgoing Absolutely. then you're gonna try to be that positive and outgoing mm -hmm. person too greatness begets greatness yeah <laughs> <laughs> and like i said you can't get there just being yourself of course you it's a lot of a conscious thing but mm -hmm. if you surround yourself with positive energy positive friends mm -hmm. that really try to push you you want to try to be that better person and going back until middle school you know i was very um started to come out a little bit i think like one of the things that i was um that i did back in middle school that I kind of regretted get it out of was this um, this firefighters explorers program and I absolutely loved it it's nothing that I would imagine myself doing you know I started to become more of an athletic person mm -hmm. I did softball I did soccer 
I started to get into it, and then when I did this program, you know, it kind of like overwhelmed me at first, but I really loved it. I went into like a training that they were doing. It was like a whole competition. My uh, team ended up winning, and I was the most team spirited person, and I got a little bobblehead trophy oh, out of it. <laughs> that's so. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's so cute. <laughs> yeah, and I, I honestly like going after that. You know, going into I think going into eighth grade. You know, my last year in middle school. I really loved the program, but there's just this part of me that I was still very shy, very introverted. Mm -hmm. So when I was thinking about it, like the reason why I got out of the program was because I was the only girl in it. And I was mm -hmm. surrounded by these guys. I was like 14 at the time and surrounded by these other teens, these other guys. and. I got out of it because I was the only girl and I was very introverted. I was like, I can't, I just can't do it anymore. I just, mm -hmm. I, I, just I feel like I'm gonna get frowned on. <laughs> I mean, I prefer, m most of you watching this know that I'm a professional wrestler as well and have been for many, many years. I much prefer the all female leagues mm -hmm. rather than being in the, the leagues with the males and or mostly dominated by males. I much prefer being in the all female leagues or the all female shows because of that like girl power type thing. I it kind of the same. Like I can get along with the guys and everything, but I per, my preference is to be in a mostly female community such as that. Um, what was your hardest thing as you were sort of transitioning like from like the caterpillar to the butterfly? What's one of your most hardest moments that you remember getting past that you're like Wow, I cannot believe I just did that. Like, yeah. Do you have one? I. So it was actually funny because my senior year of high school, I, again, like I was like trying to go out and be more outgoing. I did high school. I did softball. I did cross country, which is basically long distance running, which I never pictured myself to be a runner. But mm -hmm. over time, that's what I ended up loving. But being more engaged with my friends, getting more involved with clubs, it started to really pick up that I was no longer this shy, introverted person. Like I started to be more of an extrovert mm -hmm. and that's nothing that I really considered myself doing because every time at like a softball game, you would hear me like start to chant and stuff, you know, to get our team motivated. Yeah. Oh, you would be the one to say that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that is so cute. Yeah, like the back yeah, of You're first. like, she's like legit, <laughs> the team leader, like legit. Yeah, and I, I was- That's amazing though. Yeah, and I was team captain for my junior wow. and senior year. Wow. And going back and looking at this, it really helped me do what I never thought I could do. So during my senior year, it was going to be my last month. And they were basically, you had to submit your speech to the commencement day speaker. So you had a valedictorian, salutatorian to give their speeches, but you also have a student select a commencement day speaker. Okay. Submitted my speech. The teachers really liked it, uh, whoever the staff were to at the time. And I went in. And I was like, kind of like shaking. I was like, public speak. It's like yeah. still not you, my forte. Were you in Toastmasters at this point, or no? No, you can't be in Toastmasters until you graduated. Until you're at least 18 okay. years or older. Okay. But basically, I was like, kind of like shaking, and I was like, okay, come on, you know, at least this is in a group of like some teachers and some staff I know mm -hmm. because they're the judge committee and I go in this classroom and I have my speech. I mean, we didn't really have to rehearse it as much, but it yeah. still had to be like that. You still had to read it. Yeah. And I was like this, I was like, I was trying to be as passionate as I could, but in my mind it was like, I can't. Your voice was like, <laughs> it was just crackling. <laughs> but in the end of it, I ended up getting picked to be commencement day speaker. I was like, okay, this is really awesome. But then I was thinking, how many people are gonna be actually in, it wasn't in an auditorium or anything. We were at the Broward Performing Arts Center. Okay. And for those that never been there before, a lot of plays are performed there. And a lot, you know, it's a big, big auditorium. Big auditorium. Yeah. 
Yeah. And We're not talking small potatoes here. Yeah. <laughs> it's really big. And then I'm basically on a stage where all these plays are performed. And I was like, I wow. It's it's really something that I never held myself up to. Mm -hmm. And I was just speaking um, over with my speech and just practicing and with one of the teachers, like she helped me kind of like form my speech to be a little mm -hmm. bit better, cultivated mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And when that day came, it was raining and I was like, okay, this is like the worst My hair day. is getting frizzy, it's gonna <laughs> be a hot mess. Let me yeah. tell you, like my hair ended up being frizzy at the end of it. I had my yeah. umbrella, I was like, in my cap and gown and I was like just getting like drenched I was yeah. like this is just bad yeah and I go on that stage and I was like okay okay like I can do this <laughs> past all of it right yeah like, there's always a million things thrown at you in moments like this and you just have to fight past it yeah and people always say like when you go out to speak Picture everyone in their underwear, and I was oh, like, that's, what they say. "That's like that's like one of the worst things yeah. that you could really do." Though, what I always suggest is like when I went on that stage, I ended up looking like kind of like in the center, but in the back where I couldn't really stare at anyone. That's what I do. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I prefer to see all black, so I'll focus on like where I don't see like an individual person doing like this at me. Like that's the weirdest. Like yeah. so I focus outward where maybe it's a blur or like whatever. Yeah, so that's what I did and like I was blinded by the light anyway, so yeah. I couldn't really see it. Way better <laughs> way better. Way better when it's like that. Yeah. So how did you feel after that moment? After that, it was like, I was like, went back to my seat, I was kind of like shaking, I was like, okay, I'm so relieved that I got to finish that up, and I was just like, I was so glad that I was able to do it. Did you feel like a sense of like accomplishment? Like it was self, definitely an accomplishment. Like being so proud of yourself. Yeah, because like you're representing all the students of your high school, mm -hmm. and you get to have the speech in front of all your friends, all your family, mm -hmm. and then of course all of like, you know, these parents, you know, that are looking forward yeah. for their son or daughter to graduate high school. And yeah. I don't know, it was definitely something that I never really thought of myself to do. And when I did it, I think it really helped me. Who do you think has been your biggest cheerleader or is it yourself? So, of course, like, I'm always going to give credit to either my dad or my mom, but I, they've always been there for me, like, trying to say, yeah, you can do this, you know, why can't you do it? <laughs> Fantastic. Not all parents do that. That's yeah. awesome. Mine really didn't do that. They yeah. were just like, get a job with the city and be normal. And I was like, never. <laughs> <laughs> never normal. Yeah. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I just did not want to get a job with the city and go to a nine to five, whatever. Yeah. So you, th so your parents were supportive. They were very supportive. Awesome. Honestly, I think like at first, like back in when I was like up 10, 11 years old, I was like, hey dad, I really want to go do soccer. And he was so reluctant to do it at first. They're like, you got to drink more milk. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Any excuse. Our, my father-in-law really believes in people drinking their milk and getting their bones strong. <laughs> For those of you who don't know us, like he harps on that, like get your milk in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I, any excuse, but I eventually kind of like got him for me to do like um, at least softball. Then I really loved and you, it. And she was really, really good at softball. You were, what position did you play? So, back um, when I graduated high school, I ended up being captain. So, I ended up pretty much, I did every position. I kind of tried out for catcher, but it wasn't for me because for those that don't know, I just got LASIK. Mm -hmm. And I had glasses I'm so before. jealous. <laughs> I can't even like see the camera right now. And she can probably see it perfectly. <laughs> yeah, so I had glasses before. And every time that I try to have the helmet on, yeah. and I try to, you know, you had to do real, really quick. You yeah. had to get your helmet up. And yeah. I tried to do it. And I'm like, my glasses, glasses you always get yeah. caught up. And I was like, I can't do it, guys. Yeah. But yeah, I did every position. I was a pitcher, I was first, second, third, shortstop, uh, in the outfield, you know. I think I give my credit to always being, I was better at being 
been in the field at um, throwing to any of the bases and definitely catching any of the fly balls, but I wasn't too much big as a batter. Um, definitely wasn't the first in the lineup, but I was probably about third or fourth to go up. But again, I think always just like trying to push myself and try to get out there and just try to catch any of the balls. I think I always love that. What did all those years in sports and group efforts teach you? Yeah, I mean, for those that never really got a chance to do anything like that, I don't think it's ever too late. You could always just I like, you could always yeah. just hit the gym, go into group. Yeah, yeah and there's always like uh, different like group leagues that you can do with yeah. cities, but for me, I and there's think, adult dance, adult softball, adult like taekwondo. Yeah, you can start at any point. Yeah, I mean, for me, I think the biggest thing that it taught me was to really decide. You have to rely on a team, especially for softball or soccer. You have to rely on and a life. team. Yeah, uh, you cannot go through life alone. Right. In in life, humans, we mm -hmm. need teams and communities and people to work with to co-create on and to do things with it just that's just the way we work inherently yeah and then for like being with a team you can't really like there's always going to be the soccer among the group mm -hmm. and i think that what that's what pushed me to become like more of a leader mm -hmm. to become more of myself is because when you see something someone like slacking you kind of want to point that out to them and say, hey, I noticed that you're not doing so-and-so. Like, why don't I help you so you can get better at it? It kind of, like, pushes you to be a better leader. Mm -hmm. I think that's what team sports has taught me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think one of the biggest things that really kind of, like, not downgraded how I thought, but when I got into cross-country and I started to become more of a runner, it just taught me about, like, you have to think positive about yourself. It, it, you're like yeah. the little engine that could. Yes. And I always refer to that. And I did give a speech actually in my club for a contest. Like you're the little engine that could during a race. Like you have to say you think you can, you think I can. Instead Absolutely. of saying that, say that you know you can. Absolutely. And having, it's good to have like team sports, but just to get out there, see what you can do you have to start thinking more of a positive attitude about yourself you're not any worse than the next individual trust me even the ceo of a company has like their downfalls or the best Absolutely. athlete in the world would not have gotten where they are because they just had to start thinking that they are as good as the next individual. Yeah, but it's called imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. Like where we all feel like inherently that, oh my gosh, who am I to do this? Or who am I to do this? Uh, but we all can do whatever we set our minds to, especially like, I feel like, do you feel like, I feel like I get feelings like in my heart that I like can't break away from and that I just have to go out and do it. Like this show was one of those things. That I'm like, I have to like do it. I've been thinking about it for a while and I was like, I don't know how to do a YouTube channel. I don't know how to do any of this. <laughs> like I'm still waiting on my mic and everything like so that the sound is better. Luckily someone stepped in and said, hey Kristen, do you need a mic for your show? I can direct you to the exact thing. So I feel like we get little helpers along the way too because I'm not a tech person. I don't know about any of that. Um, you mentioned running earlier as your form of meditation. What else do you do to center and ground yourself so that you can achieve all these really, because you are quite the high achiever. <laughs> I mean, I'm a high achiever too, but you have quite the list of accolades. Um, what, um, explain to us how running is your meditation and do you do anything else to ground yourself? Yeah. Stay I focused, ground well, I could just definitely say that running has helped me a lot throughout the years that I have done it. And I think it's something that I don't give myself a lot of credit for because I go out there and I think like I started to become more and more serious like within the last year and a half because I said, you know what, I should start doing more 5Ks, you know, more three mile runs. and. I started to do that and I said, hey, anyone in my Toastmasters club wants to do this, be, you know, kind of like be more If she said it to me, I'd be running the other way, I'd be like, screw this, no thank you. <laughs> yeah, because it's, 
<laughs> it's not like I've even got. We live in Florida. It's a hundred <laughs> degrees here at nine a.m. So yeah, and I've like gotten people in my club that never went out for a run. I'm like, this is really something to go out, and it's for a good cause. Absolutely. Most of these races that you go yeah. out for has some sort of charity that they donate mm -hmm. to, and for me, it's like. I started to do more three model runs. I'm like, okay, I see like one of my uh, friends at Toastmasters ran a marathon. I'm like, okay, I'm not there yet, but what are the next steps? Let me run a 10K. So a 10K wow. is like oh 6.2 miles. And that was my first one that I did in February. I was like, oh my gosh, I really can do this. And like my friend that ran a marathon, we were like neck and neck at the finish line and like I saw that finish line, I was like, I still have enough energy to keep going. And you just see me go right past him. I just sprinted to the finish wow. line. And he's like, Amber, how did you do it? Like, you have all that energy. I was like, whenever I see the finish line, especially when I was in cross country, my coach always told me when you see it, start sprinting because you could always sprint. Fun. Yeah, you could yeah. always run past the other person Absolutely. and you don't know, maybe you could win. And it's funny because every time that since last year, since I started to really get back into it, like I've always somehow placed in, like I got third place in my age group, second place in my age group. And I was very astounded at this because I don't, I'm not the best runner. I definitely cannot run like a 20 minute, <laughs> three miles at this point, but you know, I could run about. But you don't give up. Yeah, I run about and 20 that's the minutes, and you I'm don't just give trying up. to keep going. What would you say to other young people? Say someone in high school is watching this, and they feel the same as you. They feel maybe a little more shy than they would want to be, or they feel a little more quiet, or a little more introvert, a little more awkward, whatever it may be. What would you say to them? Yeah, and I would say, like you know, of course you are never alone. But I think one of the things that you have to um, you have to realize for yourself because you are never going to be you unless you think more positive about it, about the situation. I know a lot of people, especially where um, I came from, that you are not gonna. You, there's gonna be people in your life that are not going to think that high of you or understand you. Yeah. I have had so many people in my life not understand me because I'm such a conundrum. Yeah. And they're like, wait, you should be a certain way, but you're not. And so we're really confused by that. I think that a huge part is like being who's there, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's honestly something that you, yeah, that comes from your heart and think about like, you know, what does your instinct say? Like, you should really think about, you know, if you are in high school right now or you're any point in your life. Yeah, college, 23, you know, anything, any point in your life where you're feeling that flower wanting to bloom. Yeah, I, I would always say that even though you might be at a low right now, just really try to reach out and try to communicate with other individuals because you're not going to be alone. There's people that are going to understand you. Even if it's like something that interests you, like trying to play the guitar, you know, try out and do that. You know, you're not going to be any worse than the next guy. Trust me. <laughs> your vibe attracts your tribe. Yeah. So I feel like that if you start to put yourself out there in a certain kind of way, like you did with Toastmasters or softball or any of the things you've been involved with me, any of the things that I've been involved with. Your vibe attracts your tribe, and those people that are your soul family, your soul group, will start to come forward, and then they will support you. Yeah. And then the rest of the people will sort of fall to the wayside. Yeah. And you don't even have to do anything like, shoo, get away. Like, they will just <laughs> fall to the wayside, like, naturally. Yeah. Um, what has been your biggest, like, what has been your biggest negativity in your mind that you have had to get past um whether it be in life um school sports family like whatever it may be i would always say that i think like the biggest negativity uh it it can come from i guess the family side sometimes mm -hmm. because i feel like that i've always had whether it's cousins aunts or uncles that would always like they're proud of me but it's 
where they come from, they might not have such a great opportunity. And I feel like kind of like putting that myself on there, like, you know, I don't think I'm ever going to be something more than just nothing in life because, mm -hmm. you know, I you definitely have, dealt with that too, yeah. coming from a small town, like where nobody ever left that town. Um, and you grew up in a big city where yeah. there's lots of opportunities and not everyone in your family lives in a big city with yeah. lots of people and lots of opportunities. Yeah, because I have a lot of family that lives on the countryside, whether mm -hmm. it's in Tennessee, yeah, sure. Alabama, yeah, Michigan, sure. and it's honestly like, I wouldn't say as much of a negativity, but it just started to think like, I don't think that I can be as much as I want in life mm -hmm. if my family's not there. Like, but it starts to think like you know I could always be the first in my family like I was the first in my family to go to college and absolutely I think absolutely. like just having that negative mindset not only to go to college but to get a full scholarship and to not have to pay like full academic as well as a sports uh, scholarship so you are what you are doing is you are breaking generational cycles yeah. And every parent, I'm a parent now, every parent wants their child to like break those generational cycles and do 10 times better than we ever did. So you're doing amazing. Thank you. Um, so what, with what you're doing now, she just graduated um, and she just got her first uh, full-time gig. And tell us about that. Yeah, I actually start this coming Monday, which is right after the 4th of July weekend, yeah. and I'm a little nervous. Uh, I'm just lucky that I am able to get something right now during this whole pandemic. Yes. And I just, again, I got laid off from my part-time job where it was my internship before, but they really loved me at that company that the president's of the company that I got laid off of, his cousin was a marketing director at another company. And that's the job that I ended up getting because I had a great recommendation and he really needed help. But I'll be his marketing assistant at Crown Spirit and Wines. Awesome. And um, what do you think will be, you know, will you be doing like a lot of the multimedia, like the phones and that type of thing, or do you know yet? So some of the basic stuff, of course, I'm going to be semi helping out with the social media mm -hmm. of the company. They have about 13 locations and they're all based in like Southeast Florida and they're more of a gourmet experience, mm -hmm. but it's kind of like helping out with their social media. Like, is there any ideas, any um, kind of like their website, like what else should we put on there to and put it's like an updated spin on yeah things. and it's yeah. kind of like also doing more of the marketing research they do have a lot of uh, events going on throughout mm -hmm. the year um, especially before this pandemic they would always have a lot but it's like you know I would be helping out with that trying to help out and advertise more on that side too what are your long-term goals not just with that company but like life in general like where do you see yourself in 10 years of making changes doing things to better the world and better your community where do you see yourself so i would say um because in 10 years i'll be like 32 <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> but i honestly it's Which like still very young <laughs> I, I just have little milestones that i want to do along the way i know for me, it, like personally, I definitely want to have a half marathon done, uh, a Star Wars half marathon. Oh, fun. I want to yeah. do the Disney marathon. Mm -hmm. It was originally what it was supposed to be was to, to do the half marathon next year, um, the marathon in two years, but it it might be a little interrupted, but I still want to do the half marathon and marathon. I definitely want to try to pick up and I just got my guitar restringed. I want to try to awesome. play that again and teach myself. And for Toastmasters, I really want to try to move up in the ladder. So I'm Area 32 director, and I get to see oversee all these clubs. And I'm like 
okay, I know I'm a leader now, and I know I've always been a leader, but overseeing all these clubs, making sure that they're on their path for success, completing uh, their membership programs, and it's something that I really am looking forward to this year, and I just want to try to help out Toastmasters as much as I can, you know? Help them retain more members. Help them to know what Toastmasters is because mm -hmm. it's funny because I wa I bench watched The Office like two years ago, and Toastmasters was introduced like in it, and it was like it just said the name Toastmasters. Oh, like Toastmasters, and <laughs> it was so funny because I'm like, wow, I never thought the club was actually spoken yeah. in it, and just like I think more people should know about this, and I want. Just like not even on the college level, but there's corporate offices that have it and like communities that have it too. So just helping with that and I think I really want to try to get more into crisis management, uh, public affairs, public relations, kind of like go more in that sector if it's like with government jobs or just like I kind of want to help companies out a lot more just trying to figure out like what they can do and how they can deal with the situation because I'm a very organized and articulate person yes. and I'm very detailed and I just want people to I just want companies to help them to get through a situation what is success to you success to me is just trying to do something I set my mind to I think it's just something that whether it's just that little goal like I said it's like whether it's running that 5k running that 10k eventually doing that half marathon just having those little goals along the way it doesn't really have to be something big like for me I'm not I can pretty much bake I can't really cook but it's like you know making my first like chicken and like it to be good and for my family to really like it or just like cooking other stuff like even if it's small it's like you know it's, it helps along the way it's just having those little small goals that you need it doesn't have to be anything big you know you want this job at your dream company but it might not happen tomorrow just remember to have those small little steps whether it's like, you know, make sure your resume is good, make sure like maybe get this job instead for right now during the pandemic because you can't find anything right, right now. Absolutely. That's a really good one. Yeah. And it's like, I know like people will not be able to find their jobs that they want right now. You know, I've just graduated from college and anyone that graduated from college is like put in that situation. But it's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm fortunate that I can still be at home, and but there's college students that can't. They don't really have a home to go to, and I like for them, it's it's like kind of heartbreaking. And, and like, but if you still have that positive attitude, you still have that get going attitude, no matter what. Don't give up, you know. Mm -hmm. Even if you have to call the company, say, "Hey, did you get my resume?" Like, you Absolutely. know, just just mm -hmm. little steps along towards something can lead you up for success in the long term. What is, uh, what are like your like last words of wisdom that if you were to leave this earth tomorrow, you would want people to remember about you, you would want people to say about you, what would the words of wisdom like that you would want to leave your mark on the earth, what would they be? I think the favorite, my most favorite quote that I live by mm -hmm. is that the sky is no longer the limit. You always hear it like the sky's Love the it. limit, but Love really it. the sky's no longer the limit because we have like, you know, we've gone to the moon, we've gone to space before, like that quote, like the sky's the limit, I'm like, no, we've gone outer space. It's Absolutely. like, it's just, I think like something like that, just like think of like what's one favorite quote that you have? And mm -hmm. that's something that we do in Toastmasters. If you're a Toastmasters of the day, you gotta oversee the club, but you also give an inspirational quote mm -hmm. to live by throughout the club meeting. And that's like one of my favorite things is just mm -hmm. have that favorite quote in mind. What quote do you live by? Even if it's one that you make up. Mm -hmm. You know, I live like the sky's no longer the limit because you can do anything that you put your mind to. 
even if it's even if it's big even have that if small it's steps. small <laughs> small steps lead to huge things well thank you amber for coming on thank i so enjoyed this conversation um i could be in toast just because i have a favorite quote <laughs> <laughs> mine is be the change you wish to see in the world um, because I think that a bunch of small little steps lead to huge changes. So thank you, Amber. Thank you for coming on. Thank you guys for watching. This is Connected with Chrissy. We'll see you next time.